Mavs fans, what's going on? Welcome into NBA Now from Chat Sports. I'm Jimmy Crowther here breaking down all the latest news and rumors going around the Dallas Mavericks nation. And really, there's only one thing on everybody's mind this morning, and it is Dwight Powell's Achilles injury. Now, at the time, we don't know for sure. It hasn't been confirmed that this is a ruptured Achilles, but we can all expect the worst here, according to Rick Carlisle. They fear it is a severe injury. Dwight Powell obviously went down late in the first quarter of that LA Clippers game against uh, between the Dallas Mavericks and the LA Clippers, a loss, and really the biggest loss of them all came via Dwight Powell going down with injury. Now, look, Powell has been great this year, a great role man. Defensively, he's had his struggles. Rebounding, he's had his struggles, but the numbers he's been putting up have been impressive. He's averaging 9.6 points per game, 5.7 rebounds, and shooting 64% from the field. The Mavs are desperately, desperately going to miss Dwight Powell. It really sucks that this is an Achilles injury because we all know that players usually don't bounce back quite the same when they face those injuries, but we can all hope for the best. And we know that Dwight Powell is going to work his butt off in the gym to get back to what he once was sometime next year, as he will probably miss the rest of the regular season. So today, we're going to look at players that could replace Dwight Powell. And we're going to start off with some of the available free agents because there's five names that at least piqued my interest. Number one, Kenneth Fareed, last played for the Houston Rockets. He had a nice little uh, stint over there coming out of free agency. I think he can make some sense as a role man. He's got energy. He's a good rebounder. Joakim Noah, a veteran presence who's obviously known for his defense and can rebound as well. I like the idea of bringing in a vet, but maybe he's a little too old. He last played for the Memphis Grizzlies. That was an okay stint over there. Now, of course, can't talk about available free agent big men without talking about Salah the Mej Mejri. Of course, played for the Mavs for so long. Now, I would love to see him back in Dallas, but the thing is, Boban Marjanovic is already kind of playing his role right now, so I don't think he makes a lot of sense to come back. Miles Plumlee is a guy that I think could make some sense. You know, the Plumlee brothers always have success in the NBA, but I don't really love that idea. And then if you want to go more of a shooter, stretch four type, Ryan Anderson could be an option here for the Dallas Mavericks, but I don't expect them to go out and sign any of these guys unless they try them out on a 10-day contract. Now, what I wouldn't be surprised by is a trade leading up to the NBA trade deadline. So I've come up with four realistic names the Mavs could make a move for. Number one is Andre Drummond. Number two, Gorgie Jang of the Minnesota Timberwolves, Aaron Baines of the Phoenix Suns, and Dwayne Dedman of the Sacramento Kings. Now, outside of Drummond, these aren't the sexiest names in the world, but let me talk to you, talk you into them and tell you why they might make sense for Dallas. Starting out with Andre Drummond of the Detroit, Detroit Pistons. Look, the dude is a monster on the boards. He's a nightly double-double, usually a 20-20 guy. He can do that on a regular basis. And the Pistons are shopping him. They're not looking to hold on to him. The, the Atlanta Hawks were really deep into trade talks with the Pistons for a minute, and then those things just fell apart. Uh, that's not happening. He is not going to Atlanta, maybe in free agency. But he's still up for business. The Mavs could be looking at Andre Drummond. This year, he's averaging 17.3 points per game. 15.7 rebounds, 1.8 block shots, shooting 53.1% from the field. Look, prior to this trade, or prior to this injury from Dwight Powell, I was kind of out on an Andre Drummond trade. I'll be honest, I, I didn't really want it to happen. And now I'm starting to think, you know, we might need it to happen. We need another center, and Andre Drummond is probably the best available big man out there right now. So how could the Dallas Mavericks make this happen? Here's a trade I cooked up. You go with DeLon Wright, Justin Jackson, Courtney Lee in that Warrior second round pick in exchange for Andre Drummond. Now, why this makes sense for both teams. Look, they have Reggie Jackson as a point guard in Detroit. Derrick Rose is there, but maybe you want a defensive minded guy. That's what DeLon Wright is. Justin Jackson could be a good young wing to build off of. He can back up Sekou Dumbuya, who's having a great uh, run over there as a rookie. Courtney Lee's an expiring contract, and that Warriors second round pick is basically going to be a first round pick in this next year's draft. And the Mavs get their big man in Andre Drummond. Look, I still think this is some complications. I, you know, he doesn't space the floor. I don't know how much he's going to demand the ball down low. Like, how many touches does he want? Does Andre Drummond want in the post? Because that might be an area of concern. But when you're talking pure talent, Andre Drummond is right up there with the best of the best. And when it comes to rebounding, you know you're not going to have any problems if Andre Drummond is in the middle. So here's my big question. Do the Mavs need to make a trade right now? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Obviously, this is taking into account that Dwight Powell is probably gone 
for the rest of the season assuming this is a ruptured achilles so if you think they need to make a trade type y for yes if you think no type in for no now you're probably gonna hit, hit, get hit with one of those youtube ad breaks so scroll down reply to this pinned comment let me know if you think the mavs need to make a trade now that dwight powell is down with an injury let's talk about our next guy here gorgie jang of the minnesota timberwolves now you're like all right, Jimmy, this dude's 30 years old. He was a first-round pick once upon a time. He's owed a good chunk of money. Why do the Mavs want to trade for Gorgie Jang? Well, I'll get into that in a minute. But look, he's a good, able-bodied big man. He's playing more minutes now that Carl Anthony Towns is out. He's actually stretching the floor, which I never thought we would see from Jang. But this year, he's averaging 8 points per game and 5.9 rebounds. That's almost identical to what Dwight Powell was giving you. Now, he's not even close to what Dwight Powell is as a pick and roll type player, but when it comes to his three-point shot, he's shooting 40% from the field. Now, he's only taking two per game, but 40%, that is darn good and something I would take in my center any day of the week. But here's where things get interesting. Maybe the Minnesota Timberwolves are like, man, we need to dump Jang. Mavs are like, hey, we need a center, but uh, you guys also have Robert Covington, so why don't we make a deal? We'll take Gorgie Jang's contract off your hands. You give us Robert Covington, we can all be happy here. So, a very similar package to what you're giving up for Drummond, but instead of that Warriors second round pick, I'm going with the Utah second round pick that the Mavs have in their possession. So that'll be, you know, late 40s, early 50s kind of pick in the second round. Courtney Lee, another expiring, which we just talked about, Justin Jackson, goes there. And DeLon Wright, they need a ball handler. DeLon Wright's not getting minutes. We saw his brother actually complaining on Twitter about him not getting minutes. So you send Minnesota a point guard, you get a defensive-minded wing in Robert Covington, who is high in demand right now, and then Gorgie Jane comes in and he can be your backup behind Maxi, or he can start on day one. I think this trade makes sense for both teams. Maybe it's not enough from Dallas. Maybe they do need to throw that Warriors pick in there, but I think this trade could get done. And let's say the Mavs go out and get Robert Covington. You all of a sudden bring in a defensive-minded wing that can average 12.7 points per game, 5.9 rebounds, and he's shooting nearly 35% from three, even though he's a better shooter than that, in all honesty. Look, I love Covington, and especially after watching the Clippers game where Kawhi Leonard just annihilated us in the fourth quarter, Robert Covington can go in and check him. Now, we have Dorian Finney-Smith. He's a great defensive player. In fact, I think he is an elite defensive wing. Maxi Kleba was actually guarding Kawhi Leonard last night, which is ridiculous. So instead of Maxi guarding Kawhi, you put Covington on Kawhi, Dorian Finney-Smith on a guy like Paul George had he been playing. And all of a sudden, you've got two great wings that can defend in the NBA playoffs. I think that would be a great trade for the Mavs. I am all in on a Gorgie Jang and Robert Covington deal. Now, do I want just Jang? Nah, not really. But Robert Covington and Jang, I say yes. But who would you rather trade for? Which of these two? Type D for Drummond or type RG. So you got to type both. For Gorgie Jang and Robert Covington. So you either get just Andre Drummond or you get Gorgie Jang and Robert Covington. Let me know in the comment section below. And guys, while you're at it, let me tell you about our partners over at BetDSI who are sponsoring this show today. You go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code NBA120. You get a 120% deposit bonus betting on any games, any league, any sport, whatever you want. Go make some money with BetDSI. That's chatsports.com slash bet. And then promo code NBA120. Let's talk about another guy. This is a guy that I think the Mavs could realistically land and for pretty cheap too. Aaron Baines of the Phoenix Suns. Now, the guy's aging, but you want to talk about another great pick and roll player? That's what Aaron Baines has been this year. You want to talk about a guy that can mess it up down low, kind of get dirty down low? That's what Aaron Baines does. You want to talk about a guy that can stretch the floor as a five, as a center? Aaron Baines does that, man. Aaron Baines does everything that I think this Mavericks team would like. Now, the question is, are they actually going to trade him? And I think there is a real possibility they do because DeAndre Ayton is back. And everyone knows DeAndre Ayton, the number one overall pick, you're going to play every day of the week over Aaron Baines. Ayton this year has been incredible. Look, I know we talk about Luka should have been the number one pick, but in all reality, DeAndre Ayton has been great. He should have probably gone number two, but he's averaging 18.2 points per game, 2.2 rebounds, 1.6 block shots per game, 54% from the field. Now, he's not stretching the floor, which is something I thought we were going to see from him coming into the league, but that hasn't happened yet, but it doesn't matter. He's elite on the defensive end, he's elite on the rebounds, and he's a great scorer. Now, Baines, on the other hand, is averaging 11.5 points per game, nearly six rebounds, not, doesn't block a lot of shots, but he is shooting 33% from three, which is good for a center. And not to mention, he started in place of DeAndre Ayton, and if you guys remember those first like 10 to 15 games of the year, people were like, hmm, 
Aaron Baines might be the most improved player this year, but now that's taking a back seat because Aiton, of course, is back in the picture for the Phoenix Suns. So what do the Mavs have to give up? Well, not a lot in this scenario. I think Baines could come really, really cheap. I think you just say, hey, Phoenix, Aaron Baines is a veteran just sitting on your bench. Send him to Dallas where he can actually compete for something because you guys aren't going to the playoffs. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you DeLon Wright, a defensive-minded guy who can play next to Ricky Rubio, who can play next to Devin Booker, who can play with Mikael Bridges, whoever you want. He's an experienced veteran, and he's still young, so you can build with him. We'll give you the Utah second-round pick, okay? You guys can have our second-round pick. Just give us Aaron Baines. Now, maybe, again, this is a scenario where you got to go DeLon Wright and the Warriors second-round pick. I think I'd be okay with that for Aaron Baines. I really like this guy. I think he makes too much sense to not at least call the Suns about. And unlike Drummond, he's not going to demand the ball every time you're on the offensive end. Unlike a guy like Robert Covington and Gorgie Jang, you know, you don't have to give up as much to get him. This is probably the cheapest and honestly, maybe most realistic trade the Mavs could come up with to get a center to replace Dwight Powell. I think Aaron Baines makes a lot of sense here. Now, Mavs fans, if you love this show, if you love watching me talk about the Mavs, I need to ask you to subscribe to youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Go subscribe to our main channel because we want to get some more Mavs videos out for you. I love doing these videos. I love talking about the Mavs 24-7. I want to do more, but we got to get some more Mavs subscribers. So go hit that subscribe button. Help us get up and up and up. I want to hit 200,000 subscribers here soon because... We're sitting around 150K. I want more than that. So go hit that subscribe button, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Let's talk about one more guy, Dwayne Deadman of the Sacramento Kings. And you're like, okay, this is another really boring center. Why are we talking about this guy? He's demanded a trade. He wants out of Sacramento. He wants to go somewhere where he can play some regular minutes. And Dallas would be that place now that Dwight Powell is injured. Look, he can stretch the floor pretty well. He did at least last year in Atlanta. He's a good rebounder, a pretty good shot blocker. Last year, actually, at the trade deadline, I mentioned him as a target for the Dallas Mavericks after they traded away DeAndre, uh, DeAndre Jordan last year. And now it might be coming full circle and they could get him again. But this is kind of like the Jang situation where I don't think you're just getting Dwayne Dedman, who, you know, he's putting up decent numbers when he plays. He just doesn't play anymore for Sacramento. He's averaging 4.9 points per game, just 0.3 assists, and 4.2 rebounds. Now, you see there, he's a pretty solid rebounder at his size. And then the 21% from three, which you don't love to see from a guy who, you know, you kind of think could stretch the floor, but so far it just isn't happening. But I think it could come around. I think if he's getting consistent minutes, he could really make that happen and be a consistent, you know, floor stretcher from the five position. But here's where I think things get interesting. With Dwayne Dedman, you get Bogdan Bogdanovich. You're like, hey, Kings, we'll take Dwayne Dedman's $13 million over the next two years off your hands if you give us Bogdan Bogdanovich. It'll be a little tax. You just pay up. And the, the Kings are like, I don't know, man. That's a lot to give up if we're just giving up Bogdan. But the Kings, in return, get Seth Curry, an elite shooter who's already played in Sacramento. Courtney Lee, the expiring contract. You get a young player in Isaiah Roby who hasn't played yet, been dealing with some injury issues in his foot. But you also get the Utah second-round pick and the Warriors second-round pick. That's a lot of pieces for a guy in Bogdan Bogdanovich who's probably going to leave in free agency. And a guy in Dwayne Dedman who you're owing $13 million to this year and $13 million to next year. And then the next year, he's got $13 million partially guaranteed. So you get the money off your books, you get an elite shooter in Seth Curry, you get an expiring contract in Courtney Lee, you get a young piece in Roby, and two second round draft picks. I think the Kings are at least entertained by this offer. I, I don't think it's the best offer they're going to get for a guy like Bogdanovich, but I think it makes some sense. So I like this. I think the Kings and Mavs could actually be trade partners. The Mavs get Dwayne Dedman, who comes in. He's a backup center right away. Bogdan Bogdanovich comes in, and he immediately makes an impact as a scorer and a playmaker. Now, there are other names, other centers out there that I didn't mention today because I think they're just unrealistic, but we'll go ahead and run through those really fast here. Number one, Steven Adams of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Look, the Thunder are winning games. They are a good basketball team. I don't think Steven Adams is on his way out, and he's been dealing with some injury issues this year so far. Miles Turner of the Indiana Pacers. Not too long ago, we thought he was on the trade block, and now they're saying, hey, we want to wait till we get Oladipo back. We're probably not going to trade him. I wouldn't expect him to be on the move this year. LaMarcus Aldridge of the San Antonio Spurs, they're kind of in and out of the eight seed, and I don't think he's really a fit for the Mavs anyway. I don't love that idea. I think he's too old, past his prime. I don't want to see him in Dallas. Hassan Whiteside is another guy of the Portland Trailblazers. Let's say Nurkic comes back and they're ready to move on from Whiteside. 
I don't want him in Dallas. I just don't like his locker room fit. You know, he's a good rebounder, a good shot blocker. He puts up points, but he doesn't add to winning teams. I mean, he doesn't help teams win games. Look at the Trailblazers. They stink right now. And then number five, Davis Bertans. Obviously, I would love Bertans. I think he'd be a dream, perfect match in Dallas from the Washington Wizards, but they're not going to trade him. People keep saying, hey, Jimmy, why don't you just trade for Davis Bertans? They're not just going to trade him. They want to re-sign him in NBA free agency this summer. So I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't expect him to be on the move. These are the other names that I just wanted to look at. I don't expect any of those guys to be Mavs by the NBA trade deadline. So here's what we're going to end our show on. In the comment section below, tell us who your ideal big man is to replace Dwight Powell. Now, maybe they don't need to make a trade at all. Maybe they're just like, hey, we're fine with Maxi Kleba. We're fine with Boban Marjanovic and Kristaps Porzingis. Maybe Isaiah Roby eventually gets some minutes. But if they do need to make a trade, if you want to see them go out and get someone else, let me know who that is in the comment section below.